Nyola Badmos TV. Entertainment without bound. Hey there, welcome to Trending on Nyola Badmos TV. On Trending today, UK Parliament calls for Nigerian officials to be sanctioned following human rights abuses. Details in a bit. And all time favorites. The UK Parliament has called on British government to immediately commence investigation into human rights abuses by the Nigerian government and security agencies on citizens. It also demanded the UK government to consider imposing sanctions on officials who were found culpable. These sanctions range from visa bans to asset freezing as contained in an e-petition upon which the Parliament on Monday debated. A total of 220,330 people had signed the e-petition and over 2,000 of the petitions were from the UK. In the petition, the people accused the Nigerian government and security officials of human rights abuses and extrajudicial killings. In the deliberation which took place on Monday, the parliament condemned the killing of peaceful protesters and called on the Nigerian government to uphold the rule of law. This was in particular reference to the NSAS protest held across the country last month and the attack on peaceful and unarmed protesters by the military at the Lekki Gate. The UK government established the Global Human Rights Sanctions Regime in July and it gives the UK a powerful tool to hold to account perpetrators of human rights violations or abuses and is considered one of the most important international policies made since the Conservatives returned to power. Leading the debate, Theresa Violas, a member of Parliament and Petition Committee, said the petition was prompted by disturbing violence in Nigeria over recent weeks and protesters distraught in the government after the disbandment of SARS, especially if the officers will be moved to the other police unit. Let's check out some clips from the debate. We need to call out the corruption. We need to use the powers that we have in this country to stop those who are profit profiting from the wealth of that great nation and hiding it here. Now, some people will remember when General Gowan left Nigeria with half the central bank, so it is said, and moved to London. We know that today, even, even now, in this great city of ours, there are, sadly, some people who have taken from the Nigerian people and hidden their ill-gotten gains here. We know that our... We need to and less open to change. But the UK government can use the sanctions under the global human rights regime which targets individuals involved in human rights violations and abuses. So, if the UK's position is a global force of good, then I ask the UK government to add the names of the Nigerian government and the security services to the designated list of those responsible for the worst human rights abuses. As I come to a close, it is time for the UK to change course and stand in solidarity with those fighting for a new Nigeria. Let's stand together. Let's get rid of corruption, extortion, extrajudicial murders and massacres because it's time for a new Nigeria. And I thank you. Don't do that. Thank you, Mr. Gray, for calling me speaker. I must say it's a pleasure to follow my honourable friend, uh, the honourable lady for Edmonton. Who I'd also like to thank Silas Oja for creating this petition, which now has more than 220,000 signatures, including almost 2,000 of my own constituents in Edmonton who signed the petition we are debating today. And I'm sure that I'm not the only member to have been inundated with messages from constituents in recent months urging them to do whatever they can to lend their voice to the NSARS protests. As the chair of the all-party group for Nigeria, I was particularly keen to speak on this debate and highlight the need for the UK to stand with the Nigerian people against an increasingly cruel and brutal regime. The situation in Nigeria is incredibly serious, with tragedy after tragedy unfolding on the streets in state after state. As the Nigerian government and its security forces take ever more repressive measures to end a protest movement, which has given hope to millions across the globe. The NSARS movement is not just about disbanding the special anti-robbery squads. 
It is a movement led by the youth of Nigeria who took to the streets of Nigeria peacefully, demanding an end to brutality, extortion and extrajudicial executions and for a truly democratic Nigeria. The bravery of the youth-led movement will never be defeated. Today, we need to consider how the government should respond to both the movement itself and the violent actions of the Nigerian regime. However, we must also take this opportunity to look beyond sanctions to a way in which development funding is spent in Nigeria. Instead of funding corrupt security services and investing in projects which do not benefit ordinary Nigerians, we need a new focus on poverty relief and anti-corruption to make muted responses to the murder of protesters. While governments across the world have called on the Nigerian government and the security forces to stop killing protesters, the UK government has hedged its bets, issuing only weak and timid statements. It is therefore a gift to the Nigerian government when our government fails to explicitly condemn the Nigerian regime for killing its own citizens. So will the minister today finally condemn the Nigerian regime for its part in the Tollgate massacre and the continued killing of peaceful protesters in Nigeria? Mr Gray, the Nigerian government says that it has disbanded SARS. But the corruption and brutality of the security forces continues. The Nigerian government's violence against its own citizens appears only to be intensifying. The Nigerian government needs to stop freezing bank accounts of key protesters. It needs to stop illegal detentions of key protesters. The Minister of Information for the federal government went on record to state the CNN reporting of the massacre is, and I quote, fake news. This is undemocratic conduct and it really needs to be called out. So I ask that the Minister uses this opportunity to end the UK government's neutrality on this issue. The UK must never be neutral when it comes to human rights abuses. Are the rights and needs and dreams of young Nigerian people not the same as those that are here in the UK? The UK should not be a safe haven for anyone who, de who denies their own citizens the same freedoms they come to enjoy in the UK. Mr Gray, all too often when a repressive regime is targeted with economic sanctions, it is the civilians who pay the price, while the regime itself becomes more entrenched and less open to focus on poverty relief and anti-corruption programmes. Mr Gray, it is vital that we recognise the role of the UK and how these events have unfolded in Nigeria. Despite previously stating the opposite, the government has now admitted to funding SARS units for the last four years. That funding not only included the provision of training to those units, but the supply of equipment. At the very moment in which Amnesty International had declared SARS units to have been involved in extrajudicial killings, corruption and torture, the government was using the aid budget to train and equip those units. In fact, between 2016 up to this year, more than 10 million went towards programmes from which SARS units benefited. That is not only immoral, it makes it harder for UK to play a positive role in Nigeria during this vital period. How can the government, with a straight face, call for an end to violence against protesters, having helped train and equip the security forces who are carrying out that violence? So today, I hope the Minister will publicly apologise for, for the decision to fund SARS units and pledge a full and independent inquiry into this matter. Mr Gray, the 20th of October 2020 will be remembered as the Lekki Tollgate Massacre, the day a deliberate and coldly calculated attack on peaceful Nigerian civilians was carried out by the Nigerian army. The Nigerian government has since taken part in an attempted cover-up of this massacre. Security forces in Nigeria make muted responses to the murder of protesters. While governments across the world have called on the Nigerian government and the security forces to stop killing protesters, 
the UK government has hedged it. Well, it feels like Nigerian government have a lot to put up with, especially as they continue to deny the activities that went down on the 20th of October 2020. We keep our fingers crossed, but we'll bring you more updates. Remember to like and subscribe. Go!